Hi, everybody. Hello. Get this one. My audio will be better. Okay. Okay, awesome. Everyone's looking bright and ready. It's a joke. I can't see anybody. <laughs> um, are we able to go back to the basics? Yes. So uh, that was like, I got a lot of really great feedback and thoughts and ideas from many people in the class. And the overarching, like the pattern was that I went too fast. So first I want to say, I'm sorry. That was probably really frustrating to have to kind of see me do something and feel like you're meant to participate, but it's going too fast. That's terrible. Um, and then there's like, the, um, we have like a policy about recording recordings. So that kind of makes it difficult to review it. Right. Um, and Right, so I hope moving forward, like with the feedback I got, and that was the first time that I did something like a live kind of practice without being able to see people's reactions and like only having a text-based uh, way, like a, through the Q and A chat to get feedback. So um, just make that clear. Okay, so. Um, I shared a list of, okay, so one, one thing that I want to change a little bit is I want to do um, like short lectures followed by like maybe 20 minute exercises and then going back to lectures. That way, if someone is behind in one area, they could always pick up in another. So there won't be like this large, you know, you won't, uh, it won't be like last class where we're going through an exercise. And if you came late or you missed one part, like it's all cascades and now you can't follow at all. So uh, I also, I mean, I also got some feedback that like, it's really difficult for a lot of people who don't have two screens to kind of toggle between zoom and, and, and it, an illustrator. So I'm um, one thing I, I mean, I can't really solve that problem that much. Um, I could turn off my video when I'm doing a lecture. So I guess that's one last thing to see, although I know that's not really the problem. And I'm going to try to be a lot more, take my time with the, with the instruction. And um, I don't know if you have other ideas. I also included a kind of a step-by-step -step breakdown or a rough step-by-step -step breakdown of all three exercises that we hope to do today. It's in the class folder. And uh, if someone wants access to it, I'll try to do that. Um, Ah, someone posted a, uh, a quick like shortcut to toggling between the two. So I'm going to try to, um, I'm really going to try to address that. Um, I hope we can understand that my uh, understanding. Um, uh, like uh, my kind of grasp of how you are connecting to the material is outside of the Q&A chat next like zero. So I have no idea how people are, are managing. Um, and that's like a huge um, communication barrier, but I hope that we could figure a way around that. Okay, so 
Okay, so <clears throat> I put my email at the top of every slide so that at any point you want to take down my email and email me after class. Um, am I able to keep my video on? I'm going to keep my video off for if, if that's okay for for this like for the next nine minutes, and then I'm going to turn it back on. We're going to see if that I guess helps. Okay, so. Just a quick overview, overview, you could write this down if you want to, you cannot. Um, just gonna say this out loud, we're gonna move on and then I'm going to actually do it again. So what we're gonna cover today is some things like using M for the rectangle tool, L for the circle tool, pen for the pen tool. And then we're gonna learn the shape builder tool today. If you didn't hear about it before, that's because we didn't talk about it. So I'm just giving like a quick overview, right? So I'm not teaching anything. These are quick shortcuts to copying, um, <clears throat> copying and repeating objects and, and actions. And I kind of realized that I think shortcuts was like seemingly a really good way to start, but I think I was wrong. I think it's better to go the long way around, but it's a lot uh, easier to remember versus shortcuts, it's kind of like you have to remember the function and then the formula to access that function. Uh, I realized that that was, that I think that's too confusing for people who are, like you guys are, some of you are learning what this program is capable of doing and that's already a new piece of information. You don't need some kind of formula to access it, right? So um, just, these are like very basic ones. These are the ones you're probably gonna use the most often. Um, and then these are some new things that uh, we might touch on today. Um, and I uploaded to the class folder a two different shortcut, like um, Adobe Illustrator shortcut kind of cheat sheets. Um, we're, Susan, we're going to talk about pace in place uh, today. So again, this is not, I'm not, uh, this is not teaching it to you. I'm just kind of like flashing it and then we're going to get into it in a few minutes. So um, in the Google Drive, there's uh, in the class folder, there's like two different ones. There's one that's very comprehensive and there's one that's much shorter. Someone wants to know how to access it. Uh, I can paste it right there. Um, okay. Okay, so designers don't only know how to use Adobe Illustrator. That's kind of like the one of the tools we use, um, like we use our mouths or our hands to communicate. Um, so Adobe Illustrator is just a tool to kind of share that. But visual design really is about communication, about transferring meaning, um, not verbally, but visually. So one of the, uh, so one of the main kind of or one of the principles that I want to talk about right now is called positive and negative space, right? And we don't really see things, or maybe some of us might, I don't know, but most of us don't really see things in black and white. Um, but if we look at this slide here, we can see that we are, um, we are able to make out um, information um, just by looking at the space around it. And that kind of idea um, fits into, like I referenced photography here, or fits into music that we, like information starts getting, the things that we're trying to communicate starts getting its definition by the space we give around it, by the context. Um, so I wanted to show you a couple of examples of what that can look like. And then I wanna get into a really simple um, exercise, a fun exercise that might explore that. So. Here is an example of positive and negative space, um, right? We have an object, we have this dock, and then it's surrounded by this, you know, kind of big, almost canvas. And this gives a sense of like it being light. It gives it a sense, well, also the dock is silhouetted. So it has kind of like a flat feeling to it. And I think the, that, I think what we can start recognizing is that really everything that we see is defined by some kind of like a relationship between like positive and negative space. So you have 
the thing and then the space around it, right? And if this entire photo was white, right? If it was blown out and all the light kind of covered the dock, we wouldn't see anything. There wouldn't be anything interesting about it. The fact that there is there, there are lines and there's space around those lines kind of brings that into focus. So here's another example, right? Um, and maybe for us, and I know for me, like the black shapes kind of seem to be the be like the actual objects, um, right? That the artist placed, but perhaps it was the white space that the artist placed, and that um, this kind of flat approach to negative space um, allows us to kind of move between the two, right? Where it can is it like the white space is the is the white space the shape or is the black the shapes? Uh, I mean the space and, and the white is the shape, right? And like you can kind of move between those two. Um, and I think uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about it, but I think that's why, uh, let's say, for example, a lot of logos, um, logo designers start off designing in black and white because that's kind of like the base level of um, visual communication. Can you, can you say it in black and white? Can you say it using negative space? Here's an example of a message being communicated um, using negative space, right? And this is also using something called juxtaposition, taking two opposing ideas and putting them together. Um, and I feel like if we wanted to, we could create almost like a story of what this uh, graphic is saying, right? Because there's no caption to this. So is it saying that like uh, the soldier uh, loves using his gun or is it saying that we should use like love to counter war or something but the idea is that just by removing something from this image we have we now have a story we now have this idea that's being communicated and then i wanted to use this example just as a visual way of or more like a utilitarian way of presenting information. This is the Chayenu, and we can see that there's a lot of space that's unused, right? Oh, look at all that space, the dead space. Well, really that space allows for this to be a very recognizable and flexible um, uh, cover because they have to do one every single week, right? So what we see is a use of negative space to in a very like a uh, very utilitarian way to make something iconic, make something very clear, but also make the important information stand out. Okay, so what I want to do now is um, what I want to do now is uh, start a. You guys see me? I should. What I want to do now is. Um, start an exercise. And some people said that they were still a little bit confused about, um, they were still a little bit confused about, sorry, uh, they're still a little confused about how to start it. So let's, let's do that right now. Um, give me just one second. Okay, so we're going to start, you know, I have, uh, I have it, I have it open here. Um, double click it. Right. And so I'm going to click create new. Create new presents a whole bunch of different options. I can create so many different kinds of file sizes. They're all the same files, right? Everything could be edited again, once you're in the file. So you shouldn't have a fear that, um, you're doing something that's irreversible. They're really just giving you or setting up a document that would meet your job um, qualifications. Um, so maybe it's certain kind of grids or borders or sh file shapes, etc. cetera. Um, okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna, I want, I'm going to go to print just, just in case uh, people don't have all of these elements here. So we have recent at the top, oh, you guys, are not seeing this. Um, 
Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we have new document. Um, and then I'm going to select print over here. Uh, and that's just a preference. Again, um, again, I'm almost 100% sure everything could be edited and, and, and uh, changed afterwards to meet your specs. So I'm just going to select letter because that's the file size that I, that I want. Um, and again, so someone asked what print was when you select create new. A new dialogue, a new document box is going to come up. There's going to be recent saved mobile web print. That should be, should be access. Okay. Now I'm going to create a, uh, a letter document. I'm not going to change anything for now. Um, let me just, sorry. Uh, oops. Okay. Okay, great. Um, the dialogue doesn't come up. Hmm. I, I don't know. Um, perhaps. Hmm. I'm not sure. Is anyone else having that problem? I, um, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that problem could be. Let's do that again. It's not working out. Oh. Close it. Sometimes um, if a program has some kind of irregularity, it might be best to uninstall it and reinstall it. And maybe also the window that we're looking for is kind of hiding in the back of your other windows. So we're opening it again. I want to say that some people uh, reached out over well since last class and gave like really like gave their ideas and suggestions and feedback for the class and that was that was very very helpful um, and I, I really appreciated it. Okay, so this is what I see when I open um, Adobe Illustrator. Um, my recent projects, you may not have that uh, if you don't have any recent projects, that's fine, um, but. This is what you would see. Um, you might see some basic presets up here. Um, if you don't see this, I would feel, I would suggest maybe uninstalling it and reinstalling it. Um, that doesn't mean that I think your computer or program is broken. I just think that, um, I feel like that's as far as my experience will allow me to help. Uh, I haven't had a lot of trouble with my Adobe Illustrator before, so. Right, I, I can create new, create a letter, and you don't have options on the right side. Um, I'm not sure. You just need letter. If you have letter, if you go to print, um, you can also click view all presets. Am I sharing? Not. <laughs> I would think that I was above the whole, am I sharing my screen kind of thing, but um, I'm not. That was the second time I made that mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna create a letter. Um, you don't need to see all the options. You just need to see the letter option and you would see a button that says load more presets to see more. We're going to create letter. And this is a really simple exercise. I'm gonna give it maybe, maybe 10 minutes. Um, so we spoke about 
um, like positive and negative space. And so what I want to do is um, kind of play around with that using very basic shapes. So the first thing we're going to do is make a few rectangles. Um, so I'm going to go to my left hand panel. I'm going to get to questions in, in, in five minutes. Um, I'm going to go to my left hand panel and I'm going to go to rectangle it says rectangle tool, or you could click M to pull that up. So I'm going to uh, have that. Um, and then I'm going to like, click down to start making my shape. And then as long as I'm holding down on my mouse on my left arrow key, I'm I could continue making that shape. But once I let go, that shape is created and we can tell that with like there's a little border that pops up. So uh, does that sound good? Um, right, we go to uh, on the left-hand panel, we go to M and we kind of drag it across the size of our artboard, this white space. Um, and I, I want my background to be black. So I'm just gonna click these arrows over here that tell me about the fill and the line, right? Um, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, great. So now I have this background and if I uh, left, if I right click, are you going to do that in here? No. Um, object. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to select um, my 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 shape, my my shape. I want it to be my background, right? And I'm going to go to object, which is the drop down menu on the top left, and I'm going to go down to lock lock selection. Sure. So what happens now is exactly what it sounds like. It's locked, right? I can't move it. And that's really great because I don't want my background to move around a lot. So um, how is everybody doing? Has, is that anyone not with me so far? Someone raise a hand. If you could put your questions. Thank you. Okay, so we have this background. And now what I want to do is I'm going to make, or I want you guys to make, um, and I, I, I pref you can copy me or not. So we're going to make six triangles. Um, let's keep it like that just in case people are confused. And I'm going to right click and drag, but I want my fill for these triangles to, uh, to be white. So I'm going to select that and I'm just going to hit those arrows, the kind of swap arrow. Boom, I have white, um, no, did I say triangles? Uh, I meant rectangles. Um, and so I made one, I'm gonna make another. Um, now I'm gonna, I wanna make six and preferably make them, you know, play around with the sizing and, right, one, two, four. Um, just make a thin one. Make them any size you want, doesn't matter. Cool. It's a little too similar to that one. Okay, how's, how's everybody doing so far? Um, okay, so the background, um, go over this really quickly. Um, you, you can select, and, uh, you can select the rectangle tool on the left-hand panel. And then I want my rectangle to be almost perfectly the size of my artboard, um, that I set up while setting up my document. So I'm just going to drag over the entire white space in my document until if you see uh, at the bottom, it says uh, like anchor. And that kind of tells me that it's sitting at the uh, at the edge of my artboard, which is right. We want to sit over it, over it. If it's not white, nothing's broken. That's fine. The color doesn't really matter. But now you can tell if I drag it, I have this large space. Okay, so we're only going to do this exercise for 
a few more minutes, and then we're going to move on to another exercise. And if you weren't able to follow along with this one, hopefully the next one, I don't know, the, the pace will be better. Don't worry. If you want to delete a rectangle, that's really easy. Um, you just select the shape you want to delete and you hit delete on your keyboard. Boom. You can hit control Z to undo that. That's generally like computer stuff. Okay, so I want to spend the next four minutes really um, playing around with, I'm going to unlock my background actually, playing around with different kind of um, or um, like layouts of positive and negative space. And I, and I want you to join me with that. Um, the first thing I actually want to do is I'm going to select, I, I want to select all of my um, shapes. Uh, well, we could do it one at a time. And then if you write the same place where we swapped the fill and the outline of our shapes, we're going to see a little box with a red um, line going across it. And that says none, right? And what that means is that it's going to, well, we have to make sure, oops, right? So that's going to remove, it's a little uh, confusing. So I'm gonna go really slowly. So that's going to remove, this uh, indicates the fill and you can see it says fill. And this indicates the stroke, which means the outline of the box. So whichever one is kind of on top, you see how you can click on it, it goes on top and on bottom. Top and bottom. So that means that's the one that you're going to edit. So when I, when I click on the fill and I hit none, then it deletes the fill. And if I click on the stroke thing and it, it, uh, the stroke box and it comes on top, that tells me that I now removed um, uh, the stroke for my box. And I, and I want to do that for the all all my boxes. So I'm I'm going to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, It's, it's not absolutely important. Okay, so now we kind of have this like interesting shape, right? They're all coming together. So what I want to do is I want to uh, mess around and kind of see, can I make shapes or play around with the shapes in the negative space? And if you want to think about this practically while we do this, you could think about like, what if these boxes were blocks of words or blocks of text uh, and you were making a poster? So I'm just dragging them around and you know, maybe I want to copy them. I want to make a few versions. So I'm going to just kind of make this, drag my, make like a invisible box, kind of like what you would do on your desktop um, over uh, all my objects. And um, this might be, <clears throat> excuse me, this might be a little confusing. So I'm going to, it's a really simple way to do this. Um, let's just hit control C and control V, right? We have this copy over here. So now I have a copy. That's a control C, control V. Great. How was that? Uh, you undo something by hitting control Z, control Z. Um, or, or you go to edit at the top drop down and it says undo move, right? So you see, I just undid that. Okay, so we're going to spend maybe two, two more minutes on this. Just let's move it around and let's, let's come up with something interesting. You know, maybe I'm going to move this all the way up here and I want to move that over there maybe make some kind of like flow. Don't think too much about it <laughs> or into it, but I guess kind of get a sense like this could very well be like graphic element. This could be a logo on a poster. This could be, um, right. I'm going to do control C, control V again to make a copy, drag it over and maybe this time around bunch them all together maybe.
Maybe I'll just let this guy hang out on his own like that, right? Let's maybe let the space, let the, the space in between the shapes to move somewhat. Um, maybe I'll move them into each other, right? So it's kind of interesting. Um, Uh, so your so if your background is locked, so then you could let me just lock it. So you could go, I, I believe, yes. So you could go to object and click unlock all, or you can do Control Alt Two. So you have two ways of doing it. Um, so, awesome, okay. So how was that? Is that good? Should we continue? Everyone, uh, right? I, I unlocked all the backgrounds simply because I wanted to move things around, right? So um, what else could we do here? Right, uh, I guess if you're unselecting, you wouldn't be able to copy it. Um, maybe, you know, this kind of looks like a very standard poster. Everything's very centered. You can imagine some text. Let me make a second page. Um, I don't know what your question is. Uh, do you mean like a second background? I when I when I want to make a second background, I just hit control. I select the whole thing, right? All the area. Control C, Control V. My computer is a bit slow, and that gives me a copy. Okay, how's that? that Makes sense. Right, so I, I went over that. So uh, Devar asked, how are my lines not showing? So if you want to um, remove the lines of an object, you select the object and then you can go to the left hand bar um, and kind of at the bottom, we can see this thing going on. So um, this white box will be any color that the fill of my shape is. And then the box behind it is the stroke. If you hover over it, you can see it says stroke. Um, so we have fill and stroke. Um, okay, right, and so if I select it and then it kind of, you see it goes on top of the fill, that means that that's editable for, edit, editable for now and um, let's say I gave it a black stroke. So I just hit that little box that says none, or you can do forward slash to remove any strokes. Terrific. Um, okay, so that, that's the exercise for now. I'm gonna do a, a quick lecture. Um, and then we're going to go and do another exercise. Okay. So visual design is communication. That's kind of like the abstract conceptual idea and communication is the meaning I have the definition I have up here is conveying meaning from one to another through the use of mutually understood uh, rules. So that sounds like a mouthful, but what that basically means is that I agree on the meaning of something and you agree on the meaning of something. And then we could share meaning, right? If I don't understand your language or if you made up your own language, I would have no idea what you're trying to share, um, right? And we can understand that in different ways, even when we, we can both be English speaking, um, but perhaps you have a certain way of speaking, a certain dialect, 
um, that I don't understand. Or maybe you, we both have the same dialect, but you're um, speaking rationally and I really understand things emotionally. I won't understand what you're saying. So that's kind of a, a very important point is like the visual design, the crux of it is communication. And a lot of it, right? You have one party and another party and they have to share information. Um, and that happens by having a mutually, like uh, a, they both agree on how that will happen. So we're, today we're gonna talk about one of the things that help us visually communicate. Um, and it's kind of, uh, for me, a very broad area. So I'm going to try to present it in a way that makes sense. Um, and you let me know what you think. So hierarchy, what is hierarchy? Uh, hierarchy is a system in which things, items, whatever, are ranked above the other according to status. So what that really means is that we, everyone in this class, human beings, we have priorities in our life. There are things that come before the other thing. Um, so visually, the way that, well, there's a couple of different ways that's done and that's presented, but essentially um, it comes down to priority, right? It comes down to, you have to have something that's most important, second important, third important. And like the idea of negative space is by having something that's important stick out and defined clearly, um, then you start to have a communication, right? So babies, at their sounds kind of mesh into each other. There's no pauses. There's no clear, uh, like the way I'm talking, it's very clear, right? Uh, at least compared to, <laughs> compared to a baby's. Um, so the same, the same way with communication, we're constantly trying to, um, we're constantly trying to be very kind of clear uh, about what we're trying to communicate. So this is an example of, um, of hierarchy. And at first it's just a couple of shapes, but we can, our eyes are automatically drawn to some kind of flow, right? We have big kind of, I guess, medium and small, right? And that connotes a level of importance. If you had to, if you were told to pick out the important shape, take it, and you know, cut it out, you would automatically go for the bigger one. Um, and that's because visually, that's how we determine if things are important, um, or at least in our culture. Um, oops, right? So one, two, and three, right? So the idea that you have first piece of information, the second piece of information, and then the third piece of information. Um, so one of the ways I know we're kind of going down kind of a ladder, but um, so we have communication. And one of the ways of communication um, is hierarchy, is placing some things most important and some things not as important. And finally, the things that can be read last. Um, and one of the ways we can uh, kind of communicate what's important is by using the idea of scale or big and small. Um, and you can see here that I kind of inverse that, um, just having a little bit of fun. Um, but the idea is that, right, really the big would be big and the small would be small to kind of show that, uh, that level. So we referenced uh, photography a little bit in the negative and uh, the positive and negative uh, lecture. So here we have this idea of big and small. And if we had cropped just the skateboarder right? And we had him fill the whole frame, it wouldn't be very interesting. It wouldn't be very unique, right? The idea that you have this big space, the, um, the cobblestone or the tile stone space is an object in itself, right? So there are kind of two things going on here. There are two items in this and you have the big and then the small, and it looks really interesting and dramatic, right? And there's also something kind of very minimalist and clean about this. So you have this big open space and then one kind of um, object of focus in the center. Here's another example um, that a artist did named Peter Mendelssohn. Um, 
mm -hmm. uh, for the New Yorker, a, a literary magazine. And he was talking about, um, uh, I'm not totally sure what he was trying to communicate, something to be desecration of the American flag, maybe a comment on like democracy or something. I'm not sure. It wasn't done recently, 2015, if you look at the top. Um, but we see this idea, right? It's the American flag, it's blown up at a level that we haven't seen before. And this New Yorker magazine is probably the size of a paper, right? Or like probably the size of this paper. And that's a level like we have, we usually don't see the stars of the American flag at that scale so close. So here he's using the idea of big to um, convey or to use as an illustration, right? Something that uh, I love element of surprise. And then um, I think this is the final slide for this. We have this um, poster for a concert of classical music by Beethoven. And we have these big shapes, these big, very powerful shapes um, moving around the poster or the, around the flyer. And then we have the information very, very small. The idea of the relationship between big and small, right? Big and small. So I, th I think these are a few examples of how big and small or scale can really be used to create a powerful poster um, or not, I'm sorry, not a powerful poster, but to communicate, right? Uh, if everything was the same level, not only would it not, not same level, but the same size, not only would it not look good, but we would also not know what to focus on. It's kind of like speaking in a loud tone of voice all of the time or writing in caps in uppercase all of the time. Um, Right, the idea that there is difference, there are different tones and pitches and space um, in our speech and in our music and in our visual um, communication allows us to pick out what's important and what's not that important, right? And as designers, that's super, That's like, that's basically our, our job. Our job is basically to say, this is the most important, this is not as important um, and you know, sometimes we can see posters or um, we can see posters for very low budget jobs where everything is the same size, there's a ton of information, everything is crammed together. I kind of wish I uh, shared an example. And the problem with that really, and what it kind of shares to us, the people who are viewing it, is that these people don't know what's important. These people to them, everything is important, which means nothing is important. And you kind of don't really want to participate in something like that, right? The same way you wouldn't want to hang out with a friend who all they did was yell or they always yelled or they were always angry. There's no nuance. There's no flavor to the, uh, to their, to the way they see the world. And we don't want to participate in that. Okay. So that okay so we did this um so now we're going to do another uh exercise let me let me just move it over here oh no okay so now we're going to do another exercise we're going to use what we learned uh, up until now, we can use the same kind of document, we can use the same background. Um, and this time we're going to create a couple of kind of structures, uh, architectural like houses, buildings, and then we're going to try to create a, a sense of depth using big and small. Um, and I guess ideally we would introduce like a level of like some grays, but I think that I want to focus on this. Uh, to maintain kind of a, a pace. So, um, great. So let's start by making a square. So the way we make a square is that we go to the rectangle tool on the left-hand side, or we click M. And then to make a square with perfect proportions, we're going to hit shift while we make that square. So just like we did before, but just this time we're hitting shift while we're doing that and then we let go. So again, I go to rectangle tool, I click and drag and I'm holding shift until I let go. And now I have a square, okay? Um, then 
I'm going to want to make where's the triangle? That's a little confusing. Um, we kind of need to. <laughs> then I'm going to um, yeah. Then I'm going to right click on that triangle tool, and I see a bunch of other tools. Um, okay, so I want to make sure is everyone uh, like can we all, are we all up to making a triangle that we're up to? Yes, I got some yeses or noes. Okay, I have one no. I'm sorry, not the triangle tool, rectangle tool. I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's it's like uh, rectangles, rectangles, simple shapes. Um, okay, so most of everyone's up to it. Some people aren't. Um, I think yeah, I, I need to move on for the benefit of, of the class. And then at the end of the class, I will try to address any outstanding issues. Okay, so we have a rectangle. Um, now I'm going to hit I'm going to go to my pen tool, which is on the left hand side, or you can access it by clicking P. So that. Uh, and let's, I need to make this clear. Select your, select your newly made triangle. So we're going to select it. And while it's still selected, we're going to click P. Right, P. So now I have this kind of like interesting kind of cursor. It looks like a pen, obviously. And this is where smart guides are really awesome. Right, smart guides are gonna let me know because what I wanna do is I wanna make a little house. So I'm going to turn my square into kind of a, uh, a house with a pointed roof. So I'm going to, you can see, this is what you should be seeing or what you would like to see. You want to make a point at the top part of your square um, directly um, in line with the center. So that's what I'm gonna do. And all you do that is by clicking down and now you see that there's a blue box that appeared that wasn't there before. Um, and now the way we pull that up is I'm going to go to my white arrow direct selection tool on the left hand side, or you can click A. So now I have that little arrow and I'm going to directly select one point, which is the point we just made, right? I wanna make a, a pointed roof and right now I have square. So I have to obviously change something about it. So I, I select it. And now um, I'm going to drag up. Preferably, you should really hold shift when you drag up. That way it will be in line because you could really go anywhere. So I'm going to hold shift. And now I have something like a house. OK. Um, Okay, so let's say that's fine, right? Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make another rectangle. This time I'm gonna make like a taller apartment building, obviously not very in depth, but I'm going to drag and that's what I wanna see, right? So we kind of have this, this thing going on over here. Um, and then I'm gonna to want to make another building. So make another rectangle. And that's what I have, right? So we have three different rectangles. Um, and I, I wanna make a rect, um, like kind of distinguish them a little bit. So I'm going to continue using the rectangle tool and kind of make, I have no idea what it would be called, but what looks like a few steps. Um, right? Um, that over so it's in the center and I'm gonna do that maybe a few more times. There's no right or wrong way to go about this. We're making rectangles and we are um, like if you want to do anything else that's perfectly fine um, but that's what we're, we're doing. 
we can do rectangles and I just want some variety. So how do you make a triangle on top? So when we make a, um, I'm gonna do this, skip a few steps. So we make a square um, and then by, we select that square and we go to the left-hand panel, we go to the pen tool, which looks exactly like a pen. And when you hover over it, it just says pen tool. I select that and then I go back to my selected square, right? Um, and I, I want the point to be on the top. So I'm gonna go to the top of my square and I'm going to click down on the path that I want that point to appear. So now I, it, you might not be able to see it, but I've just added a point which will become the tip of my, um, of, of my house, kind of a house, right? So then I have to go to the direct selection tool, the left-hand panel on the top part of the left-hand panel, there's gonna be a direct selection tool, like a white arrow, or you can click A to pull that up. So now I've selected, now, so then I have my direct selection tool I go um, and I select my new point. Um, and that should be possible in, with your direct selection tool, my new point. And now I wanna drag up, right? Because I need to move that point up to create kind of a slant to the roof. And that is how it's done. Okay, so, okay. So now, what I want to do is I want to make a few random windows um, and, and I want to do it in black. So how do I do this in a not confusing way? If I want to if, uh, really, um, I guess, kind of um, crude way to change the color is you can double click on the fill or the line area on the left-hand panel. So double click. And I can move this circle anywhere. Uh, does that make sense? This is not super important. If, if you don't get it, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna make a few windows for, um, right? But that looks really bad. <laughs> Yuck, sorry, can't, can't stand it. Um, I'm going to hit control C, control V, just like we do on a Google doc or uh, an email or a web address, copying and copying it. Um, and then for consistency's sake, going to continue doing that. We put a little door over there. Nothing fancy. Okay, so we, we, what we're talking about is the idea of big and small. And that idea um, can be, we can kind of explore that by, we can hover over, right? Like we, um, in the first exercise, we selected a bunch of rectangles. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. And now I'm gonna do something called grouping, right? Isn't that? Isn't that wonderful? They invented something called grouping, which means you don't have to um, select everything every time you want to move it. You just like, drag that kind of selection box over the elements that you want to select. You uh, right click and you'll see something called group. Awesome. So now what I have is a whole bunch of rectangles that are grouped together. So again, that's I, you know, I use my selection box to kind of select all of the shapes that I want to group together. I right click and I hit group. Another way to do it is just uh, use control G with all of the shapes that you have selected. Uh, your whole left panel is blocked. Um... That sounds really weird. Maybe it might be good to, maybe you need to restart Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I don't think it would be your computer, it would be the program. And so maybe you just need to close it or restart it. Um, it shouldn't be locked. 
there's, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and group all of these elements, right? I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to right click, hit group or use control G. So now I have these three kind of elements, right? Um, and by using the idea of big and small, I wanna create like a sense of depth. I wanna create um, a sense that maybe, well, I don't know. Right now they're all, some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. So I wanna kind of go away from that. So um, we spoke about last class, but I'm gonna go over it again right now, is how do we make things bigger by keeping them the same? So sometimes, or this is one way to make things bigger, you drag, <laughs> Right, you have these double 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 arrows show up, which tells you that you're about to drag this shape, and you drag it, and that looks, I guess, it looks kind of like a warehouse or an air hangar, uh, air air aircraft hangar. But I want to keep exactly what my house looks like, but I just want it to be bigger. So the way to do that is by clicking Shift when you use those double arrows to make it bigger. Does that make sense? I'm using Shift to make it bigger. And are we good with that shift? So you can make it small, or big, small or big. And <clears throat> I'm gonna make everything the exact same size, um, right? So now we have kind of like this very, uh, they're not perfectly aligned. I won't deal with that right now. Now we kind of have this very odd looking skyline. So what could we do? And I, um, I recommend that we, you all try this out on your own. What could you do to kind of change this up? So I'm going to make this really big. I'm going to make that really small, super small actually. You know, that almost kind of feels right. That kind of, this building kind of reminds me, this building kind of reminds me of the Empire State Building a little bit. And so, uh, what is this? Um, so, uh, that kind of makes sense that the house is so small, but, uh, and I'm using shift and you don't have to follow along with me. That's not that important. It's more important that we take the time to kind of play along and see what, what happens when we make things really big? Um, that looks like a mustard bottle now, right? Um, and what about layering? What about, I guess they're all kind of white, so that doesn't really work. Um, but what if I put something in front of the other? Um, Can you unlock one element? Sure. Um, you can ungroup items. Um, that's one thing to do. Um, you can ungroup items by right clicking on the group and it just says ungroup right there. So I'm actually going to, can I do that? I'm actually going to ungroup and I, I wanna change some of my elements to be different colors because they're kind of disappearing into each other. So I'm going to, to make it black and My window's white. Ugh. Right. How's how's that how's it how's this going for everybody? Going well? So how about this, right? I made the house bigger than the kind of, I guess, apartment building um, that I that I built over here. And let's stretch that out a little bit. And now we also have this idea of like before and after. We have this idea of layering. So we have a house, we have an apartment built, we have like a skyscraper, and then 
this apartment building in between. And we really just did that by using size. And this might seem like a little bit uh, elementary, but this is these kind of tricks, quote unquote, or um, formulas are exactly what um, professional designers use to create a, uh, a like a layer of importance um, in their work. Right? Maybe this can be like a real estate, <laughs> real estate company logo. Sure. Um, right. Maybe this is in front of that. This apartment building is in front of the skyscraper. Maybe I want a few more homes. Should we try to build a few more structures? Let me see it in the uh, in the Q and A section uh, chat. If yes, no. Okay, I'm not seeing a lot of feedback. Um, Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make another structure right now, and that would give me something more to play with. To put one shape on top of the other. Uh, well, someone asked, how do you, how can can you go over how to put one shape on top of the other? Sure. So I just made a rectangle. And now I make another rectangle, made another rectangle, and now they're right on top of each other. Does that answer your question? Okay, so I'm gonna make kind of like a, a factory kind of building, right? Um, and uh, I'm gonna use um, very simple, simply I'm going to use my pen tool. So that go, I'm gonna to go to my left-hand panel. I'm going to select the pen tool. And I am just going to start making, I'm going to try to make like a right, a right triangle. Um, so well, not a perfect right triangle, but kind of just not sure. Is, is this something people are comfortable with? Uh, I'm going to use the pen tool for a little bit. Um, I'm going to make a line over here. And then if you see that that magenta line is kind of guiding me, telling me that, hey, if you wanted to make a triangle, then you will bring your line down to this point. And then it, then once I do that, it tells me that um, the point that I just made is exactly um, uh, horizontally aligned with the, my first point, right? Which allows me to make a triangle. If that's not what happened in your experience, that's totally fine. Um, if you wanted to copy me exactly, um, what I did was I, <clears throat> I took the, I went to the pen tool. I, let's go, it's kind of a blank area. I went to the pen tool and I kind of went a little bit of an angle because I want to make a triangle, right? Um, and then I used my smart guide to let me know, um, or you can hold shift but I use my smart guide. Uh, shift will kind of force your line uh, or whatever you're using, um, like specific with the pen tool into a 90 degree, uh, I believe it's 90 degree. So the, the pen tool is a little complicated. I'm not planning on getting really in depth into it right now. So if you don't get it, that's, that's totally fine. So how do you make the pencil stop? Great question. Um, so you can, let's do that right now. So I'm making a pen tool. Um, so once you, let's say you close a shape, you can just click V or you can go to the left-hand panel and go to the selection tool, which is the, um, arrow all the way at the top. Right. And that will kind of give you the basic general tool. So I have these different triangles. 
And what I want to do is I kind of, I want to make a kind of like an abstract look at what a factory roof is. So I'll show you what I mean right now. I made a copy of my first triangle, um, control C, control B. And now I have these three triangles. And my smart guides are going to tell me um, when they're lining up, when the points are touching um, perfectly. So I want, um, want all of that to be white, all my triangles to be white. Okay, so I have this kind of interesting, um, this interesting kind of roof. Um, and then I'm going to make a chimney stack. So using my trusty rectangle tool, just going to drag up right next to my triangles, but leaving a little bit of a gap because I want it to be discernible. I have a chim chimney stack. Now, I realize that my, uh, my shapes are different than the rectangle I made. So I'm just going to adjust the color very easily. I adjust the color by selecting the shape, then going to the um, left-hand panel. Um, and then going to the fill area, which we touched on before, double clicking on it. And I have all these range, this entire range of color, but I'm gonna to go to the white area. So I just drag, wherever I drag and then let go, that's the color that it gives me. Um, you can't understand how multiply the pile. Uh, just do control C, control V. Um, I think for now, like that's, that's the instruction I'm going to use. Um, okay, so just go that second. Oh, that's not what I wanted to happen. So I'm just, I'm going to select all of this. Um, I'm actually going to make a black. I'm going to use my selection tool to go over it all. And now I've grouped it. It's a little awkward looking factory, but it's distinct enough for what we want. So what I really want to do is kind of create a, I don't know if you could call it a story, um, but some kind of uh, narrative of what's going on here, right? Kind of a, uh, um, Right. So a narrative about what's going on here. Um, we got factories, apartment buildings, yada, yada. Um, and again, what I could do, another thing I could do, nothing that I think would be interesting, you guys, if you make it small, if you make something smaller and then move it away, right? And so now you have this kind of clump, this community almost. And that's another, that's something else we're gonna talk about later. Um, is how uh, things, when they're put together, obviously we associate that they are telling us something. Um, okay, awesome. So someone asked, why is my pen tool a double line? Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, when I click on the pen tool, I get a single line, single. Well, now the fill is there. If I want to reverse that, I just go to this kind of swap fill and stroke area, or you can do shift X at the same time, right? And I have a single line and do control plus to zoom in. Or if you wanted to zoom in, um, again, it's not a crucial, to what we're covering, but you can go to the zoom tool, which is on the left-hand panel. I know there's a lot of tools. Most of them we won't be using right now, but there's a zoom tool right on top of the fill area, a magnifying glass. You can click that. And then to zoom out, you would press alt. You see how it um, switches from minus to plus alt and then click. And then you click V to get your regular tool. So how are we doing right now? Uh, 
we're doing we're doing well. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to, how do you enlarge an item? You enlarge an item, uh, sorry, just want to cover that one more time. So let's say I have this selected group of shapes. Um, well, what usually happens if I right, pull on something, I'll just pull on that kind of part uh, and then I won't really uh, make the rest of the shape bigger. So the way I make it bigger, um, without stretching it is I click shift while I, while I pull at the edges and that makes it bigger. So I click shift and I don't let go until um, I, I don't let go of shift until I have let go of my mouse or my, my keypad. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, another thing that we use in, let's say, in America, in our culture, or let's say, in uh, when we, when it comes to Hebrew, we use um, right, uh, right to left. But um, in when we read English, we kind of have been trained to read left to right, and so um, we'll start by looking at a a visual, a piece of communication by left to right and are picking up information as we go. Um, give me a second. Um, and this is a tool of communication like anything else is. Um, we can use that um, kind of formula uh, that everyone uses to take in information and visuals by playing with um, left to right orientation um, or left to right kind of movement. Okay, right? And that, so think, so this line might not, like it's kind of Z zigzag, might not mean that much, but when you think about um, how we read you know, on a page or a poster or a website, this is kind of how our eye moves. We move to the uh, to the left, and then we kind of move across the page, and then we start from the left again, and we just do that again and again and again. So really, this middle line is more like something that our eye just has to do to get to the next left point, and then we move to the right again. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because we kind of we kind of have this in our toolbox of how we uh, communicate. So here's a poster. For, a, for, an, for an album of an artist, and we have his name at the top, the top left corner, right? And then we move across, and this poster is kind of very minimalist and very, very modern and austere, and maybe a little bit like standoffish, right? Like, oh, I don't, I don't say too much. Um, and we have this big circle, just, but it's a thin line, so it doesn't feel very heavy. And then our eye moves across the next piece of information, which is the name of the album of the music album. And then we see um, like the song titles and the name. So we see here how it, it uses this idea of left to right to make a very um, powerful um, uh, composition. And uh, I mean, it's up to you, but I would suggest like, hey, maybe try to recreate something like this, an illustrator just for fun. Um, and kind of get a feel, well, one for Illustrator, but also get a feel for how like really interesting designs are made. And, you know, this is perfectly, you're, now that you have access to Illustrator, you're totally able to create uh, this exactly and something like this. Um, another thing that we use, right? Another kind of tool that we use is top to bottom. Um, I'm trying to think of a, an example perhaps we would all encounter. Hmm. Well, anyway, um, let, let's say like a menu, right? A menu starts from the top, there's a title, and then there's information, or maybe a very basic wedding invitation. We have we're cordially inviting you to blah, 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 information, information, information. That they're hoping or they're expecting that you're going to read from the top and going down to the bottom. 
Um, but that's an expectation that we get to use and we get to employ. So we could choose to have people read from the top to the bottom, but we could also play with how that, um, how that happens. We, could, we get to use that again as a, as a tool. So what does that look like? Right, top to bottom. Here is a cover of a, a book cover. And I just saying I really enjoy uh, book cover design. Um, not that I do a ton of it. I haven't designed a book yet officially, but it's so interesting how book cover design, they, you know, you, you read a book, you take uh, the main idea of the book, right? Uh, and you turn that into a visual that not only communicates what the book is about, but also gets people to pick it up and buy it, right? So on the one hand, it's marketing. On the other hand, it's art, taking it like a boiling down an idea to a core kind of visual and then communicating that and making it look like something that people would want to pick up and buy. Um, Cause that's the point of a book cover. If people didn't uh, buy books, then there would be no point of book covers. We would just have stacks of paper. So that's a great, um, that's a great uh, kind of source of visual inspiration. Right, so now I'm, we're going to look at a few examples about how designers use the idea of the typical ways we read to play with it. So on, um, on the right, we have a book titled uh, Things We Didn't See Coming by Stephen Amsterdam. And the cover is by Peter Mendelssohn, a book designer. And he used this idea, right? So first there's like this play on, play on words, things we didn't see coming. And it's like wrapping around, almost like the designer made a mistake, right? Almost like the designer made a mistake. And he um, set the title of the book too far to the right. And now it's kind of was printed by the printer uh, who didn't adjust the design at all. And now it's, it looks like messed up, right? So that's the idea is that it was a mistake, an oversight. Um, on the designer's part. But the reason why, you know, um, I don't know, no one actually thought that, that that happened was because we could read it very well. It's clearly um, done, it's not, I don't know if it's clearly done intentionally, but it's functional, it works. And so you have like this visual play, but you also have using the idea of right and left um, or left to right. Um, we can make out the title and the name of the author basically perfectly. Um, now, this other image on the, uh, on the right, um, right, so here it's like a very top to bottom design, kind of, just the text at least, very top to bottom. We even have this little um, review by somebody that very, the, the placement of the, of, the, of the type is very almost expected, but what they did was they flip the image, they flip the graphic, and now we have this almost the reverse of the top to bottom. When we usually, right, are when the top to bottom, our eye would start from the top and rest at the bottom, but because of the image, our eye gets drawn back to the top. So here the designer was using this idea of uh, top to bottom almost in their favor and forcing us to engage with the, with the flyer, or, or I'm sorry, the book cover, just a little bit more, right? Um, so, and here's one more example. Um, this did take a little bit of time and maybe this is not a very, the, the, image, the book cover all the way on the right is a very typical, right? We probably wouldn't see this in the store. I guess it was meant for a very specific audience, an audience that really would take the time to read it. But what did the uh, book book designer do? Book cover designer do here? Um, it says city by landscape, right? It's a little broken up, I know. Um, and I guess the information, the author is over here. But what you what it, they broke it up, and the idea of landscape is spaces, right? The idea of like lawns and parks and um, and skylines and bars and all these different elements go together and you can kind of, I guess I can, I can pretend that I see like, um, like an, a satellite image of different structures and then the space between them. And so they're conveying an element of the book 
uh, of what the cons of the of the content of the book in the in the form in the design of the book. And again, they're using uh, relying on us reading it from left to right for us to be able to decipher it. Now, I didn't include examples of Hebrew um, one because I don't know how frequently I come across like Hebrew ba based. Um, designs really like they might have Hebrew in them, but they're not Hebrew based. But if you do feel free to share. And I think that would be really cool um, to show how right people who design with like either Yiddish or Hebrew, they are using the idea that pe they're expecting us to read from le uh, right to left just as well. And they're relying on that and they're using that in their design. I don't know of anyone who designs from bottom to top that seems to be a bit counterintuitive. Um, well, I guess maybe that's a, uh, that's something, um, that's something they can do. Um, okay, great. So we're going to do our, our last exercise and then I wanna like help people work out some kinks, um, go over some things. So with this exercise, I guess it's the most kind of free form and And what we're going to do is use the, the idea of small and big and um, left to right or, or, or top to bottom to create um, interesting designs using, um, kind of wish I shared stuff before, okay. Um, using um, like basic shapes, okay? So I'm going to use the same background. I'm going to just select the background of my, my positive and negative artwork. Even better, how about we create a new artboard? So the way, um, should we do that? Hmm. Let's see. Okay, um, does, that, does this work for everyone to just take the background from their positive and negative and uh, I'm going to select my zoom tool to zoom in or you can just press control plus to zoom in. So now I have this, this space and sorry. Okay, so I, I have these like colors over here and you can, um, you can access your colors or you can change uh, some like preset. You can get access preset colors by going to the right hand panel and the uh, kind of properties panel. What's the official name? I'm not sure. Um, and what is that? Well, actually, better yet, let's go to windows at the top left, the drop down um, menus. Um, we have something called windows and I want you to go all the way to the bottom. It's out. It's an alphabetical order. And I want you to find uh, something called swatches, right? Do we see that swatches and this kind of thing will pop up. Do we all see that? Everyone able to get it? I'm going to make a few boxes for my color just to show you. You don't have to do this. Okay, so we have my swatch, swatches. <clears throat> I have access to all these colors. And um, if you wanted to kind of replicate this, um, I'm going to make a box red. Uh, I'm going to make it blue. You can just move around the side. I'm gonna make it this color, um, yellow. Um, <clears throat> they have a, uh, kind of a, a scale of gray um, group over here. And I'm going to make it kind of like very light gray and then black. So that's close enough, right? Um, so I'm gonna make my background color. I'm going to make it, um, let me just add this in. Okay. so going to select it, boom. And now I wanna uh, lock my background. I don't wanna interact with it while I'm um, designing this. Actually, 
first. Yeah, I'll lock it for now. I'll go to object, I'll go to lock, and I'll do selection or control two. Control two will also lock it. Shapes that you create disappear from the screen. Um, I don't know. Are you deleting them by accident? Or perhaps you can zoom out. Um, you can zoom out by you can zoom out by using the magnifying glass on the left hand panel. And uh, when I click that, and then I'll press Alt on my keyboard, and that will zoom me out a whole lot. Or um, or Control minus to zoom out. Okay, so. I'm going to um, right click on my rectangle area on the left hand panel um, and I'm going to make a circle. Another way you can make a circle is just by hitting L on your keyboard. So I have the circle, but it's the same color as my background, so it disappears. So I'm going to make it blue. And remember, we're playing with two ideas here. We're playing with big and small. So make we can make something really big. I'm going to hit shift to um, make my shape uh, bigger uh, at the same kind of scale. And then I am going to make a rectang uh, rectangle. I'm going to make that really small. All right. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> A little too big, right? Um, okay, so we have this this relationship here. So this kind of could be like a top to bottom relationship, and uh, I recommend making a few more objects. Uh, I wouldn't say make as many as you want because I feel like having a limitation to what you were playing with. Um, will, will benefit you. Um, let's see if this is really simple. Right, so we can make a really basic triangle um, by grabbing the pen tool on the left-hand panel or clicking P and making a line. Um, and the pen tool lets you make shapes of any, any angle or any curve, but if we wanna make straight lines, when you, hit, when you hold shift, um, while you're using the pen tool, it will give you very rigid, uh, very rigid lines, right? So when you hold shift using the pen tool, it gives you very rigid lines. So I'm in the pen tool and I, I made a point and I'm like, oh, I'm going all over the place. Um, and then I hit shift and now we can see, right? You see how it's like these hard angles. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I hit control Z to undo what I did. And now straight line. And now I want to make a perfect, uh, very geometric triangle. So I'm just going to move up. And how do I describe this? You see how I'm trying to find the center of that bottom line. Um, that's because I'm trying to make something that's very symmetrical. So um, my pink um, smart guide shows up and lets me know that I'm coming over the center of my baseline. I click down to make a shape, to set a point, and then I move back to my starting point. Was that, was that too difficult? Does that make sense? So I'm actually gonna unlock, unlock this. Okay, so the idea that what I, what I wanted to do here is I wanted to, uh, I wanted us to play around with making um, basically compositions using these very basic elements, right? And that's what we're doing here, right? Um, control C, Control V. I just want to give you an example of what I what I had in mind. Um, Let's 
I'm just going to copy paste a few things that I did um, that I did today to oops. Okay. So these um, Okay, so these, these are things that I made, right? So we have this idea of big and small, but we also have um, the kind of zigzag pattern that leads your eye. So we're not using information, we're not using dates and times. Um, we're just uh, trying to carry the eye across um, a very um, limited frame. So that's what, I'm, that's what we're doing over here. How's, how's everyone doing? Is, that, is this working out for them? Awesome. Does anyone have any questions about they want to do something that they see? And I, um, I suggest like doing this, making like a ton, make 50, you know, make a lot. Every single uh, variation, you can make a copy. So you have a ton of these different things and I think you feel kind of proud of yourself when you look at this, like, you know, it, I guess it could look a little childish. I don't know. Um, but I feel like this can also look very sophisticated if you employ the idea of like hierarchy and scale and negative space to communicate. Um, I guess not necessarily communicate, but just pull the eye along um, pattern, right? So I'm keeping my eye on the Q and A section, but we're just going to go ahead and just make some make something. I'm gonna connect these boxes together. Right. Um, let me change that a little more yellow. Not enough yellow over here. So like that. So I guess what I'll start by doing is start by putting this over here, this big shape. And then I'll put this smaller shape as that kind of the introduction. Or I'll make the big circle yellow easier to see. Small hour, let me make it red, right? Red, Little very primary colors. And that's a good place to start. It's a good, it's a good to start with like very basic limited um, like limitations to your project, especially if it's something that you're just experimenting and playing out with. Um, because the more complex the information you're dealing with, the more difficult it is to kind of try something new, you know, if, uh, everything. So as uh, so some, uh, so, so I'm having a problem copying the page with the shapes. It only selects the background or the shapes. Hmm. So Esther, when you have right, let's say uh, if you look at my screen, I have a background and I have a bunch of shapes um, kind of on top of that background. Um, when you select it, do you select everything? Do you um, try to get everything, right? Like um, drag your selection box over everything. Maybe. Um, that's kind of fun. How's it going? Continue on. Um, so if we remember, um, if we remember the idea of like using control D, that's why I made, oops, that's not what I wanted. 
I thought, if you remember control D, that's how I made this kind of the line of, of circles. So if you don't want to pay attention to this, you know, this already great. Like uh, I, I recommend like making a ton of different layouts, playing with, again, playing with negative space, playing with form, playing with things being in front and in back. Um, oops. Oh. Oh. Scaling. Oh. This is so frustrating. I have like a preference on my keyboard, but anyway. <laughs> um, okay, right. So now we have like this kind of interesting idea. I don't know. For some reason I can copy it using the edit keys on the toolbar and not the control C. That's very weird. Um, I don't know. Um, it might be that, let's see. So when I, I select an object, I hit control first and then I hit C. And I don't let go of control until I've tapped C. And then um, I'll hit control again and I'll hit B. And I won't let go of control until I let go of B. So it's really specific, but so that's how um, you have to do it. Oh, you are using a Mac that does make a big difference. Um, yeah, I know. I, I know how to use a Mac, but I'm using Windows. So the first kind of, um, my first, like my intuition is to give instruction uh, in, um, in Windows lingo. If this must be really frustrating if you're using a Mac. Um, okay, so let's go over Control D. It's really useful function, especially when you're trying to make like a very repetitive element, right? So delete everything. I hit delete to delete things. And I'm going to zoom in by hitting control plus, or you can use the magnifying glass on the left hand side. Okay, so I'm going to select my triangle that I made. Um, I'm going to select it and I'm going to uh, just, I'm going to, what do I want to do? Um, let's say I want to make a line of something, right? So I'm going to select it and the way to make a copy of something right next to it. So, right, if the way I do this, the way I have two triangles like that, I could make a, I could do control C, control V, and then um, try to align it using the smart guides. But, uh, and, and, and if, if you don't want to pay attention to this, that's totally fine. It's not absolutely necessary. So I'm going to hit uh, shift. Alt, click, drag. That would be a lot of steps. Another way we can do this is, right, we can hit Control C, Control V, and just paste it anywhere. And then I use my magenta uh, smart guides to line it up. And it says intersect, you see a bunch of lines kind of crisscrossing, and now we have them right next to each other. Now, oh, what I wanted. Um, so, the control D copies an action. So a control D like that kind of tool doesn't really know. <laughs> um, uh, control D doesn't really know what you want to do. It just copies exactly what you did. So if I, you know, nudge this triangle over and then I hit control D, it'll just repeat that exact uh, kind of uh, action. So if I want to have a bunch of objects like touching each other, I'm going to um, alt, I'm going to hold down alt, I'm going to hold down, hold down shift, then I'm going to click and drag across like a horizontal axis. And now I have two objects touching each other. Now I select, you can see I have my second triangle selected, the one I just copied and moved. And now I'm going to put my finger on control, hold control down, and then hit D. And D will, every time I hit D, still holding down control with one finger, and then I'm gonna hit D again. And every time I hit D, it replicates it again. It'll go on forever. 
Does that make sense? Is that working? Or command? I, yeah, I'm not sure if I could successfully uh, repeat uh, all the instructions in Mac Linko. So, right, so let's say we, let's, let's do it with some circles. So I'm going to hit L to make a circle or I go to the, um, I right click on the triangle area. Uh, I'm sorry, on the rectangle area, right click and then scroll down. There's a whole bunch of shapes. Feel free to explore those and um, make a mess. So I'm going to make a circle and I'm going to make a perfect circle if I, um, sure, different color selected. Um, if I want to make a perfect circle, then I have to hold shift when I make my circle, right? Uh, if I don't, then I can, you know, I, I have other cool shapes, but they're not perfect circles. So I'm going to make a perfect circle by shift, click, drag, and then holding down alt, holding down shift, clicking and dragging along whatever axis. I could do it also on a, on a vertical axis like that, right? And then control D. Every time I hit control D, it will repeat that action. So, okay, great. So I wanna use the last, let's say 13 minutes to first, uh, well, I guess take, uh, take any questions, solve any problems and also just going to continue working on these kind of layouts, these different kind of layouts of, of shape and, and very uh, primary colors. Um, so someone asked, how do I put a shape in front of another shape? So First, we could start by right-clicking on that shape. Um, and I hope to cover this again next, next, uh, next class. So if, you, if, if you're not up to this, totally fine. So I'm gonna select a shape and I'm gonna right-click on it. And I'm going to go down to Arrange, right? And when I go to Arrange, it says bring to front, bring to back or send to back, send backward, bring forward. So uh, if I click send to back, um, we see the outline and it's gone. Uh, it's behind my background now. But what if I want to send my background all the way to the back? I'll right click, go to a range in the in that drop down, and I'll send that to back. And there are also shortcuts for this. You can a shortcut would be um, control and then square bracket. So it's a little confusing. Let me, let me type this. Ugh. So you want the bracket that looks like this, right? Square bracket. Um, and this will, when I, when I do control, when I hold down control and then use square bracket, um, it brings the item a layer forward. And then, uh, so that's the right one. And then, oops, when I use the left square bracket, it sends it backwards. So, or you can right click, uh, go to a range. And then in a range, you have four different options of kind of layering. So again, I'm gonna take my triangle hold down control and then square bracket or command. Uh, and if I, right, so right now I'm going to hit the left one, the left square bracket, it sends it to the back and then I hit the right one, it brings it forward. Someone asked, what's the possibility of rewatching the recorded class? So Robin Ward, Wardy, uh, Robin Wardy has asked us all of the recordings I'm basically uh, like a co-host of this, but all of the videos are stored on his um, thing. And the general policy is that recordings are only available on like a kind of an emergency basis. Um, so in order to address that, I posted a Google Doc with 
the basic steps or the general steps that we used in these three exercises. And I tried to be as clear as possible. And if it needs to be any more clear, you can let me know. And that way, um, I, I hope to make it available for the next, I hope to make it available next class before class uh, earlier. Um, right. Thank you, Chaya. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Chaya appreciated the speed. So that's good because I, I understand that last class it was way too fast and I'm sorry about that. Um, Anonymous says, every time I play with shapes, I get a dialogue box for height width of, of the shapes. Right, so that will happen. So um, if you just click, but don't drag, right? Is that what you're getting? So that's what happens when you just click. And that basically means that if, if you know what dimensions you want your shape to be and you don't, for whatever reason, want to uh, drag it, you want it to be precise, then you can put it in here and it will make it automatically. So let's say I wanted to make a 60 um, and then by 600, well, that's a little too big, right? Let's do uh, 300, okay? And now I have exactly 60 by 300. Um, but if you wanna make a shape, you have to click and then drag. That's what I'm doing. If I, I wish I had a camera on top of my uh, hand so you can see I'm clicking and then I'm dragging. I have a touchpad, so I'm, I'm moving it across the touchpad, but you move your mouse and then you would let go to um, the side on the um, shape. Perfect, okay. So continuing to make our very sophisticated minimalist posters, or I guess we call it that. If you have a color printer, I think it'd be pretty cool if you printed it out. Um, I don't do it very often, but I do enjoy like printing things out and just seeing what I made. And even if it's something small like a sketch, it kind of feels good and gives it a sense of legitimacy to see it kind of uh, out of the digital sphere. So, oh no. So what can we do here, right? Make this really, really big. And a fun idea with big and small and scale is that make things too big or play around with things being too big and too small, right? So start with that. Um, Group that. Okay, let's move it right. That. Very clean. Uh, what type of printer? Um, <laughs> I actually only have a black and white printer because I'm cheap. Um, <laughs> um, I have a, yeah, I have an inkjet printer. I think I have an inkjet printer and I don't know, maybe you could print it at Staples or I'm not sure. Um, it's a very basic printer. It doesn't have, I mean, I, unless you really want it to be high definition. I just think that sometimes keeping things only on a computer makes it a little not very satisfying. And, uh, you know, it's like it, it's motivating at times to print things, right? So. Um, let's make this black. Just kind of like how these different boxes are laid out. So I'm just going to pop them in there somewhere. That looks kind of cool, right? Any other questions? Your pen tool isn't there. Um, well, if your pen tool isn't there, then you probably have some other tool selected. So you can either just hit P or you can go to the 
left-hand panel and click pen tool again. Right, and in, the, in, in this design I just made, you have like a, it's very heavy shape on one side and then a very light shapes on another side. Maybe, you know, maybe if we deleted these dots, they'll be more pronounced. Um, maybe even delete that, move that arrow to the bottom. That's a little too spread out, right? Okay, so we're just moving around very basic shapes, things that we all learned how to do. And we can see that we are already capable of creating something within a certain vibe, within a certain mode of communication. Are there any questions that people want answered right now? That, yeah, that they want answered now? And I'm always copying it um, because I like to see all the different versions that I created. Here, maybe these yellow dots. And control. Why isn't that working? get behind it that's kind of interesting um no too much yellow right um okay so The rec, uh, if you, so someone said, if I lost a rectangle, quick tool on the sidebar. Right, well, that just means that you've selected a different shape. I mean, I'm just uh, assuming that I understand your question. So that just means you selected a different shape. You can just right click on the, um, you can right click on the, that, the rectangle area or the shape area, right click and you see a bunch of different shapes. So maybe you're on the polygon tool uh, and you just go back there. Another way to do it is to um, no, you can't do it there. All right. Maybe I'm going to break the geometric thing and Something crazy. Um, if anyone would like to, I mean, I would understand if you're a little uncomfortable, but if you would like to share anything that you've made, um, and we haven't spoken about how to export things, so if you find a way to share it um, with me, uh, and maybe you just want some feedback or, you know, a screenshot of a problem you're having or just something that you think came out really well, feel free to do that. Um, yeah, you can email me uh, and maybe I should just flash my email one more time. My email is up here at the top, um, uh, zevbloth at gmail.com. Make sure to include something in the subject line. As of now, this is my personal email, right? Um, so include something in your subject line so I could uh, get back to you. Um, okay, cool. So these are different, different things that we created today. Um, lots of shapes, some color. Um, awesome. Okay, great. So that was tonight's class. Um, we're gonna have the next class this Thursday at 8.05. Um, back at it. Back at it, okay. How to enlarge, I don't know how to enlarge my PDFs in the share drive.
Um, maybe that's something we can Google. Uh, if you're referencing the shortcuts, you're saying that they're too small. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Good night, everybody.